Okay, there. Are you people happy? We focused the camera before the show. Before the show, not during the show. And I'm pretty sure that we got it right. But then again, this is coming from the same person who was pretty sure we had it right all those other times. So uh, welcome to The WAN Show, guys. We've got a great show for you guys today. I'm going to be having uh, James and potentially some of the other writers join me. One of them is actually working on the review of something really, really exciting. That's me. In t You're not working on anything exciting, are you? <laughs> Someone finally said it. <laughs> you, get, you, you get all the, like, <laughs> monitors and stuff. I got good stuff. I like like what? I like working on the Bixby thing. <laughs> yes. Okay. Yes. Actually, that is going to be a good topic for later. We're going to be talking about um, Linus showcase tips, which is not the internal code word for it, but is definitely what we're going to be calling it externally. You made me delete that. I did. I made you delete. <laughs> I made you delete the internal code word, lest it lest it leak from our from our facility here. Um, and James can talk about sort of what he's working on. I can talk about what all that's going to mean. Uh, we also have some updates on legitimately exciting products, or at least rumors on them, including Intel's upcoming Z370 chipset and Coffee Lake CPUs. And in other news, okay, you do one. Let's see if you can do it right this time. Mm, AMD is killing Crossfire. Done. Single card only from now on. <laughs> Not true. That's not the news. It's not true. That's not the news. It's what not is your the news. excuse? There's okay, look, when Luke and I get this crap wrong, the excuse is that we haven't actually looked at the document yet. It's you worked on it. It's a joke. It's called a joke. They're still going to have multi-GPU. They're just not calling it cross. You've seen the page. comments on our writing lately. Our writers shouldn't be making jokes. I didn't see the comments. Oh, you know what? It's funny, though, too, because... A lot of the time, you guys actually get crap for stuff that I added to your scripts after the fact. Oh, you're the worst. <laughs> <laughs> Let's roll the intro. <laughs> Everyone says Luke looks weird, but it's weird because you're not Luke. Not yet. Not yet. Not yet. What the hell does that even mean? Like, it's one thing if... Designer babies, man. CRISPR? Designer babies? <laughs> I could get into that. All right. <laughs> As someone who has a baby? Well, yeah, like, if I could, like, <laughs> make my children slightly better, wouldn't I? You're, you're lucky your kids are likely to not ever watch this. Yeah, it's, it is... The odds of them watching this episode of The WAN Show are pretty low. Then again, I mean, I... I I don't really, um, hmm, maybe this is the wrong place to talk about this, but I don't really get why people watch The WAN Show. Mm. Have, did you ever watch The WAN Show before you worked here? Yeah, a little bit. Really? Okay, yeah. why did you watch The WAN Show? Uh. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, I was, good question. I was scrolling through the list of LTT uploads, good and I accidentally, question. and then, and then I suffered from partial paralysis for 30 minutes. Honestly, I watched it for Luke, so it's just gone to shit now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you and everyone else. All right, so why don't we jump into our first topic today. Um, you know what? The, the, I'm sure this one has got everybody wondering what the hell it is we're talking about. This was posted on the forum by Syntax VGM, and the original article here is from PC World, and naturally, I didn't uh, check my... Oh, I didn't... Oh didn't plug in my H2. Oh, I'm sorry, I just hit the mic. Oh, oh, bad people. Everyone bad with people headphones. Everywhere. Yeah, rip, rip everyone with headphones. I'm sorry, you guys. Um, there we go, boom, that's what it looks like. So, AMD Radeon phases out Crossfire, the Crossfire brand, that is, as multi-GPU gets more complicated. So, in a nutshell, what's going on here? They're just not saying Crossfire anymore. Instead, they're saying MGPU for multi-GPU, not to be confused with mobile GPU. And they're doing this for a reason related to DirectX, because apparently Crossfire relates specifically to DX11 applications. Do you know about okay. that? Yeah, so I can, can explain you, Can this. you drop okay. this on us? Okay, so 
First of all, Crossfire, uh, the branding, has always been confusing. AMD has used the Crossfire brand for everything from ancient X800 class cards with like these weird master slave DVI dongle nonsense things hooked up to them, all the way to um, no master slave relationship, two, three, or even four cards running in tandem with these bridges connected to them. It's more progressive. And then, and then they added an X for like, you know, it's the usual thing. X for extreme. X for that X factor. X for cross, fire again, more crosses. You don't like this? You know what? Try this you one. You know what? I don't even. I don't even. I don't even need. I don't even need all the comments about how I should get rid of you and bring back Luke. I want to get. Look, trust me. Look, I, we all want Luke to be we here. We all want Luke to okay. be here. Okay, J James more than anyone because he gets to be in the same building as Luke when Luke is here doing the show. Ah. Um, but hey, one uh, in twenty of those comments say I'm okay. <laughs> Thank you. And there's, a ch there's still a chance. And if my doctor got 5% on his exam, <laughs> well, gee, I wouldn't be here to tell you about what if my doctor got 5% on his exam. Discount Luke. <laughs> Discount Luke. Yvonne's pregnant again. Um, okay, so... Wow, that would be complicated. Um, okay, so basically they've branded a bunch of different things a bunch of different ways. Crossfire has even been used to describe running a craptastic AMD add-in card with the onboard graphics on your motherboard to make it slightly less craptastic. And it never made any sense. It was always stupid. But not, that's not to say that all Crossfire was always stupid. That particular one was always stupid. But this branding has always been really confusing. So now they're getting rid of the Crossfire brand and if you want my honest opinion, um, I think it's just because they don't want to take responsibility for it when it just doesn't work. But what does it have to do with APIs? Okay, so what it has to do with APIs is that DirectX 12 and Vulkan are going to support multi-GPU rendering in a different way than previous APIs. So with DirectX's 9 to 11, the way that SLI and Crossfire worked was via proprietary means enabled through the graphics card manufacturer. So the game engine did have to support it, but it didn't actually have to be explicitly coded in by the game developer. So you could actually take a game, let's say it used the Unreal Engine, for example. You could take some random game by some indie developer using the Unreal Engine, and even if you had two cards and you got no performance benefit from SLI or Crossfire whatsoever. No scaling. No scaling at all. What you could do is a lot of the time you could go into your NVIDIA control panel, you could manually enable some form of multi-GP rendering, 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 be it uh, alternate frame rendering, or uh, I mean that's the most that's the most common one um, and you could apply a, or you could apply a profile from a similar game also using the Unreal Engine and boom you would have SLI or Crossfire scaling and a lot of the time it would actually work okay to the extent that it worked when it comes to DirectX 12 that's just not a thing so the way that it's meant to be implemented with DirectX 12 in particular is by the game developer. So they are supposed to actually code into the game how it would utilize multiple GPUs. In theory, this would actually give you the flexibility to mix and match graphics cards. In practice, I personally think that this is basically the end of multi-GPU outside of a very small number of, of niche games where the developer bothers to mm. code it in. Because that's how it is. That, that's how it is right now. There's only Ashes of Singularity, Tomb Raider. There's only a handful. Does Tomb Raider even scale well with MGPU? I don't even well, know. Well, it does better on DirectX 12 than 11. Okay, you, well... There's only a few that do that. So, so, so pretty much there'll be those games that are as much benchmarks as they are games, where they actually put all of this support into it because what they're trying to do is get like tech publications to use their game as a benchmark, which is basically free advertising for the game. So as far as I can tell, a lot of game developers have finally clued in to the idea that putting a baked-in benchmark in the game 
is pretty much getting marketing for a small investment in development time. Not to mention that it's just convenient for the user. No kidding. Like, um, Doom, Doom is the only newish game that we're featuring at all, and all of our videos are still showing Deus Ex from 2014. Yep. So, so basically, that's what I think. I think AMD is changing the branding because they just don't want to be associated with it not working. And but is MGPU really even new branding, or multi GPU? Um, it seems just more like the the name for it. <coughs> Well, that's exactly it. Is they're they're almost they're almost debranding it. <coughs> Speaking of debrand, this episode is brought to you by. No, actually, it's not. Um, so it's almost like they're just removing all their branding from it, so that they have to take no responsibility whatsoever when the experience sucks because game developers don't bother. Because even now, with the relatively, and to be clear, I'm not saying that it's not a lot of work to like make a game or whatever. Even with the relatively small amount of work that a developer has to put in in order to have SLI or Crossfire work properly, a lot of games, it's like really broken. So asking them to go several steps further and code it right into the game, yeah, we'll see. I think you're right, it's just gonna be over. If everyone's not doing it, there's no, when would you ever make that investment? So it's the same cost as upgrading your card. You need me for two minutes? Yeah. Oh, wow, apparently you're on your own for two minutes. Oh, uh, again? Uh, why don't you talk about, uh, ooh, Microsoft officially kills I'm off. Not no. You don't want to talk about Microsoft killing this off? This is Sky your baby. I'm talking what? about WeChat and the Chinese government. WeChat and the Chinese government, don't get political. Nope, nope. I, I don't need to get political. You put this in. You we, have the, we have the best non-political podcast, the best. I called up my friends. It's, they told me we had the. It's huge. It was the best. It's terrific. The best. The greatest. Tremendous. Earlier this week, WeChat confirmed WeChat is a giant app in the in China. It's like WhatsApp a bit, but it's more of a super app. Uh, you can buy stuff on it. I think it has mapping, and a marketplace and stuff like that. Huge in China. WeChat this week confirmed what everyone was already thinking, and that is that it actually sends a lot of its users' personal data right to the ruling regime, the Chinese government. So reading from the page here, which I didn't do last week, to awful effect. WeChat has over 662 million users, and in a recent privacy statement, confirmed that virtually all of the private user information will be disclosed to the Chinese authorities. This became known during a recent update to the app. Users were required to accept the update, or to accept the privacy policy in order to get the update, and in that policy, it basically says all your base are belong to us. Now, there's a couple scary parts to this. Hey, Max, you sit down. Yeah, where's Linus? Get in here. I'll take over. I'm back. No, we don't want you. You know what? It's the post Linus we, we era. We don't want you. Let's just get rid of James. How, okay, okay, let's see it. Right. Okay, no, we're, we're straw. Don't do this to me. No, no, we're not going to do it yet. We're not going to do. How it. dare we're, you? We're going to straw pull it. We're going to straw pull it. I didn't agree with the comments last week that said Linus was a harsh, mean boss, but I'm on your side now. <laughs> James Real. or Max? Okay, so it's. Uh, James, I'm, okay. I'm out of here. Um, you're lucky it's not 5:45. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Um, okay. Let's go ahead and create this poll here. Okay. Let I'm, me just say one thing. I'm about dropping this. this in, dropping this in Twitch chat. Dropping this in Twitch chat. Okay, guys. Guys, hold on. You gotta. You guys gotta, you guys gotta hit the uh, the straw pull for me here, okay? Straw pull, straw pull. Okay. I can't talk about the WeChat with a real thing. girl. Talk about the WeChat thing. So flaccid. Here's the weird thing about this: Beijing, aka the Chinese government, has announced that their regulations will mandate that WeChat users will be liable and prosecuted for any information posted in the group that the government considers objectionable. I.e., if you send a message to your buddy about some, something the government does not agree with, ooh, and that gets read by the authorities, you can just go to jail. That's pretty dope. Hey, have you heard about Tiananmen Square? I just like stumbled across, up across this website that I shouldn't have been on and learned about it. The authorities find that out, you, you're just... Black helicopter is going to jail. I mean... <clears throat> Theoretically, it could happen. It's a little tinfoil hatty, but is it? We're not guaranteeing that it would happen, but uh, I, th I think that to say that this is anything other than deeply disturbing would be, um, 
would be objectively incorrect. It may not happen, but if the language is vague, then it could happen, and that's what's scary. Yep. All right, so let's go ahead and have a look at the results oh, here. No. So let's uh, screen share. Wow. 76% Max, 24% Linus. So James gets zero votes. What the heck? Zero votes Did, whatsoever. Zero you, uh, percent. You done goof. Can you believe James got zero percent hmm. of the vote? How much of a percent does it count for one vote? Because I voted James. You voted James? You are clearly full of crap because there is no James option on the poll. Mm. Which I did on purpose. It's all James all okay, the time. Okay, okay, Max, come on in. You're doing a topic. Yes, I know so many things about topics. Seventy-five percent. Seventy-five percent of the audience wants Max to come in. Okay, let's see. Bye, Linus. Do you want? Do you want it? No, no, no. You're out. You're out. Okay, so Max, do you want? Do you want like a softball topic, or do you want like a? Uh, no, I don't mean literally softball. Because <laughs> well, I don't know anything about sports either. Okay, no, I mean like a, I meant like an easy topic, yes. not actually like you mm -hmm. know. I do. You know, that kind of thing. Yes. Uh, or do you want like a hardcore tech topic? Oh, nope. Nope. You I want... really don't. Okay, you want a softball. <laughs> yes. Okay, uh, how about, um, let's see. Razer confirms development of a gamer-oriented mobile device. Mm -hmm. So what he said. Okay, hold on, Wait, hold on. Okay, what about like the Amazon Echo? Okay. I, don't I, don't know, how, I, I literally... Do... How does this format work? Okay. Um, USB Group announced US announces USB 3.2. Where are you seeing all of this? Okay. So, okay. So she's more of a camera person. Uh, here, why don't we go with um, let's go with Polaroid's new camera. <laughs> okay. Okay. Let's talk about Polaroid's new camera. It's not actually on the dock, but we mm -hmm. can we can discuss this. Okay. Okay. The original article here is from The Verge. The first Polaroid Instant camera in a decade is, according to The Verge, adorable. This is it. This is the Polaroid camera. Can you imagine in this day and age spending $100 on a Polaroid camera? Bearing in mind that we're not talking it looks like a Polaroid camera. By the way, you should come a little closer. Do I smell that bad? No, I'm just like... Okay, you're just you're out of the frame. Uh, she's a camera person, but the frame concept she's still working on. I'm behind on. the camera, not... Yeah. I, I, know, I know, it's confusing, isn't yeah, it? Yeah. Okay, lost. so bearing in mind, it doesn't just look like a Polaroid camera like an adorable digital camera. This is actually a Polaroid camera. The iType film packets are $16 per pack mm -hmm. for eight color or black and white exposures. It's rough. Does this have a place in 2017? Okay, well film is huge now. Mm -hmm. Like I have a mm -hmm. film camera, it costs $16 for you to develop and get digital prints like emailed to you. Or whatever. Why would you um, do that? I don't okay, know. I'm glad we are talking about this. What the hell? Uh, yeah, I don't know. It's just like it's a look. You know what I mean? Like it has like a specific like feel to it, and there's like, it's just it's just a thing. It's just a thing that you do. So it's like an artsy artsy nerd thing. I get. I guess. Yeah. Okay. Okay. So then, but well, what about the Polaroid camera? That's really expensive. <laughs> <laughs> Sixteen dollars. Two dollars a photo. Uh, yeah. No, mm -mm. And that's probably US dollars, so we're talking like $2 and 30 Canadian rupees. That's too much. 2.4 2 Canadian rupees, whatever it works out to. Yeah, no, see, that's like... Uh... Okay, but what about the... Cause, okay, because if we're going to talk about taking a picture with a specific type of camera just to get like a, a, a filmic aesthetic that like all the cool kids are doing, don't you think all the cool kids could get into Polaroid cameras instant? We, instant cameras have been around like literally always. We have those little cute ones, you know, the little like color pastel ones and they come out with like the tiny. You know, I hate you young people. Instant cameras have been around literally always. <laughs> do, you, do you know how much that hurts? I'm sorry, I mean like. <laughs> literally always. <laughs> For like a really long time they've well, been around. Well, at least since I was born anyway. Brandon and I actually like went half seas on this Polaroid printer that he's gonna go get. And okay, all right, okay, you, tell me about it. Okay, so you have like this app on your phone, yeah. and you can choose any photo from this app. Unbox therapy did it. And uh, Thanks, Vanna. Yeah, <laughs> thank you. Uh, yeah, carry on. So yeah, you basically like connect this to your phone via Bluetooth. Okay. And then you choose any photo you want yeah. on your phone, and, and then you, like you can even like add filters, like they're little, things that you can do. You can print straight from your Instagram on that thing. Okay. And it's incredible. And it has like, it's those little ones. It's like the half size ones. Yeah. So you called it Polaroid, but it's actually made by Fujifilm. 
gotta go. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so so basically, how much does this cost? Is this it's just an inkjet printer or like? Is it one fifty, two hundred? So two hundred bucks, and then how much are the refills? Ten bucks for ten. Uh, yeah. Ten for twelve? Ten for. Uh, it's like yeah, it's like ten for. 12. And is that Canadian rupees or yeah. is that okay? So so about eight dollars U.S. for what ten or twelve exposures, yeah. whatever it is. So okay. So as long as you're gonna print more than a hundred and twenty pictures, this is a better value. Yeah. Plus, you get to choose which one you want to like print. So you could take like a million selfies on your phone right. and then you pick the right one and you print it out and you're like, oh, I casually first try. But nobody has to, know, you know? Right. And you can okay. add filters and whatever, like I said, so. So if I'm to understand the sort of the, the artsy person perspective on this, the problem with the Polaroid camera is that you might frame your selfie wrong. And that's the advantage of this. Yeah. <laughs> It's just like, I don't know, I think it's better. It's definitely more portable as well than, like... You know, it, like, when is VHS coming back? Never. Are you sure? The hipsters are bringing it back. Like, how sure are you that not VHS very. is not... Because if, if we need little mini photo printers like this, and if Polaroid is releasing a new instant film camera... But, like, that's... You can decorate with that, and it's, like, physical memories that you can give to your friends. You're not going to give your friend a VHS tape because then they need a VHS player. You know, this is just a tiny little, it's like... The player is your eyeballs? <laughs> yeah. What's a VHS? All right, yeah, exactly. yeah, I've had enough of your crap, Colton. You know what a VHS is. Yeah, you're old. All right, oh, I dropped your uh, printer thing that you went half season on. Um, okay, all right, well, thank you, Max. That was Thanks. fun, I and uh, basically, no, Polaroid camera, no, right? Mm -mm. No, well... <laughs> you're thinking about it now. <laughs> it's growing on you. I, I knew it. I knew this was going to happen. They have ones that you can get at, like, Nordstrom. Can I say that? Is that a thing? Uh, yeah, sure, sure. Whatever. That you can, like, buy that they're, like, uh, refurbished. They're about 150 US. And those are, like, legitimate. If you're really going to go hipster, you shouldn't buy, like, the new old... Because it looks like a toy. If you're going to get a Polaroid camera... So you don't... <laughs> so the issue is not the Polaroid camera. It looks kind of silly. The issue is the look of the camera. Yeah, that too, because if you want to do it, you got to look cool. And it, it genuinely does look like, like one of those fake ones that you would give to a three-year-old. Yeah. To be like, right. oh, yeah, sure, take photos. See, this, this, is why, this is why I don't get it a lot of the time. I get all wrapped up in, like, specs and megapixels and, like, camera launch time and blah, 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 blah. And I ignore things like, well, this trendy retro camera is sort of real retro, and this trendy retro camera is, like, not real retro, so... Cool. Yeah. Did you just destroy me? I, don't, I think we're both destroyed at this point. Thank you, Max. <laughs> I'm gonna right. go now, bye. James, you can come back. <laughs> Linus doesn't get it confirmed, says Twitch chat. Perfect! That's what I need on my Friday! Thanks, Max! You're welcome. <laughs> Not, um, not to out hipster Max, but I don't think you can buy a hipster <laughs> camera at Nordstrom, a corporate chain. You need to go to a vintage store to be a real oh, hipster. Okay. She doesn't live in Vancouver. She lives. <laughs> Who cares? You know? Ah! Oh, go oh, lordy. Okay. All right. Let's move on to our next topic. Um, what did you want to talk about? You're so oh, you wanted to talk about Microsoft officially killing off Skype <laughs> for business. Okay. The original article here is from The Verge. You, All right, I know you were really passionate about this topic, James. Microsoft Teams is replacing Skype for Business to put more pressure on competitor Slack. All right, fill uh, us in. I know this, this one was really dear to your heart. I can't even find it. Do you, have you used Teams? Question number one. No, I haven't used Teams. Okay. Our office is not moving to Teams, I don't think. No, it's not. Okay. Do you have a burning hatred for... Skype for business. I do. Do I you? Do. Yes, I do. <laughs> Why is that? Okay. So the problem with Skype for business... Is that it's not actually Skype. Is that... Okay, yes, there's that. Number one. It is for business. Hmm. So they have that going for them. Are we a business? We are a business. <laughs> but we are a business that actually has Office 365 subscriptions for all of its members... But the Office 365 doesn't include Skype for Business unless you get the stupid premium one. Mm. So Skype for Business was kind of like the social network that requires 
everyone else to be on the same social network. Except it was expensive. And it had no benefit, as far as I could tell, over other options. Apparently, Teams is giving Slack some sweat. Yeah? Like, Slack is the... Like, they're actually giving them sweat? I don't like think they really... Like, they're sweating, and then they're going over to the, the Slack office, and they're like, here's our sweat. That is disgusting. You are disgusting. Uh, anyway, okay, so I think that Slack basically had all the market share. And when I say that they're sweating, I don't mean that like it's 50-50 now that Microsoft Teams exists. No. Like, let's be honest. But it's enough. And they're getting some cool new features. So the ability to hold calls, the ability to transfer calls, they're getting voicemail, which is like, it's like, it's like when are we going to do away with voicemail and go back to little analog tapes mm. that fit in your answering machine? When will my Apple Watch be a watch? Um, and audio conferencing. So I don't think, I've never used Slack that way. Maybe the group chat can, does, does Slack have voice calling? Or I've only ever used the chatting and there's, there's bots. To my tags. knowledge, Slack doesn't have voice calling. So this is, sounds like it's like Skype plus Slack. So if they outstrip Slack in lots of ways, no, they, they yeah. claimed at their unveil to have yeah, 125,000 businesses using Teams. Like in the first six months of rollout. Okay, so no, they apparently, um, they, apparently you can make calls on Slack. So I know Luke uses Slack. I actually, I wish far more than I already did that Luke was here because Luke actually has extensive experience with Slack um, and he has been using it with the float plane team for quite some time. But um, yeah, there you go. You can make calls and pretty much the problem with Skype for Business, aside from just not really having a compelling value add and not being intercompatible with Skype. That's the biggest thing. Like the Sp fact that you had to go and install Skype for Business on your computer, then the, the login didn't cross over either. And so how confusing is that when they share the same name? If you've never used or heard of Skype for Business before and someone says they're gonna call you on it, yeah. you, the, the time for the meeting arrives, you log into your Skype and you're like, where are they? <laughs> that literally happened here. That literally has happened to me quite a few times because using Skype for Business would only ever come up if the other business happened to be like stuck on Skype for Business. Like everyone else just uses something that you can call into, like uh, what's um, what's their fa like go to meeting or whatever, yeah. where you can just call in with a landline or you can call in with whatever. But Skype for Business, I think I just you're gonna be able to do that with teams. Confusing. So yeah, so Teams is looking like, so it's actually using the same backend as Skype for Business, um, but it's going to be losing the Skype branding and it's gonna be getting some, some fun new features. So Skype for Business is gonna be around for the next one year. Yeah. October 2018, and it's gonna be interoperable with Teams throughout that period. So that's kind of nice for like the 10 people who use Skype for Business. What the heck are people talking about? Oh, everyone wants Max back, by the way. Of course they um, do. It's better looking than me. Stream for YouTube is down. Stream for YouTube is down? What? I'm so confused. I am so very confused right now. You know, you Twitch chat people, you guys are adorable. All right, let's talk about something James really wants to talk about. The SNES Mini. Mm. So this was originally posted over uh, by WM Groom AK on the forum, and uh, the original article is from Overclock3D.net. It looks like Nintendo's SNES Mini may actually use the same hardware as the NES Mini. The exact same. So we might be just getting a new shell, some new game ROMs, and actually the same hardware. Check out this picture. Like, wow. People are upset. So why are they upset? Two reasons. Okay. Number one, everything here makes sense from Nintendo's perspective. Yes. But just doesn't make sense according to the laws of the universe. The NES, the SNES, no, the NES Mini Classic, like the last one, got canceled. Now we know that that didn't actually have to happen because they obviously are they're still making the same parts and the same fabs. They didn't have to make it an exclusive limited time only thing, but they did. They just hate money as far as I can tell. No, this makes you more money. It's like, why doesn't McDonald's have the rib witch all the time? No, it doesn't make you more money. It has influxes of demand when it comes out. Well, yeah, but that assumes that they're going to re-release the NES Mini. 
I think it says that they will. It may not be in the notes. But I think like next summer they're, they're going to do that again. The, uh, the second reason is that they could have made the Super NES all the time. The whole time they had the, the hardware records that to make the Super Nintendo and only now they're giving it to us. Okay. So a thing we wanted for all, all the time we could have had and a yeah. thing we still want now we can't have anymore. But Nintendo has the power and we're like, they're prisoners. Okay, so I'm gonna, okay, I'm gonna play devil's advocate a little bit here. What was your first argument again? I don't remember, I wasn't really paying attention. They, ca they canceled production. Ah, uh, yes, they, so they stopped production of the NES Mini. So, I, I, uh, okay, yeah, that, I really don't have a justification for that one. Okay, as for the SNES Mini not being released right away, that makes a ton of sense. Because yeah, from a marketing sure. perspective, you want to, you want to, yeah, you want to have products to roll out. You want people to have something to spend their disposable income on this month, mm -hmm. and then if you release you're basically fighting yourself. Don't make them choose. Yeah, don't make them choose. You know, wait till they've gotten a few more paychecks and then release something else. The other side of that argument that I'm gonna devil's advocate a little bit here is that while obviously Nint Nintendo didn't run out and like develop a bunch of new games for the SNES Mini because that would be <laughs> besides the point, um, it's not like there wasn't going to be some development they had to do because this is now this is not a janky ROM running on Z SNES on your old laptop that doesn't even have a modem in it. So literally copying like ROMs over on that 16 meg thumb drive that one of your friends in high school gave you because he's a super cool dude and he like, you know, went back to China before we had USB thumb drives here in North America. One and brought you one. Um, well, because uh, uh, anyway, the point is, you know, this, this is not some, you know, and oh right, so then you have to use your USB drive on your desktop to copy your ROMs over to this laptop, and then you take the laptop around with you, but it actually doesn't really have like a working battery anymore, so you have to be plugged in. You know, totally hypothetical story. Um, this so it's gonna work good. It's supposed to work properly. So they actually do need to spend some time, presumably, doing some testing, making sure everything is smooth. Now, to be clear, it's not like, you know, NAS or SNES emulators running on, you know, ARM CPUs is anything new at all, but there's just some validation to be done before they can actually release a product like this. They've got to create box art, which, you know, you might not think about as a consumer in terms of, like, whatever. It's, it's box art. Who cares? Mm. You throw some art on a box. Like, what's wrong with you? But you actually have to factor in, okay, you know, which company is producing it? What colors and what right. can they put the, the, the Nintendo seal foil on it? Can sure. they do this? Can they do that? When can, when can they meet the order? When can they print them? When will that be delivered to the factory to be packaged? To, like, there's a lot. And if that, you're a business entity with limited resources and you're just going to take this workload and spread it out over time. So the way to do that is to have the old one and then the next one. Not to mention that there's things like FCC validation that you or UL certification that you have to go through for any electronic device and you're gonna you're just gonna kill yourself trying to do everything all at once and then like so, so try to, to like design all the hardware all at once and then try to build all the software. Okay, well, well, they did do they all did. the hardware all at once. Okay, they okay. Did. Yes, that they did. And then try to build all the software and all the UI crap and do all the validation at once. And then and marketing. deal with all the submissions for like regulatory approval all at once. You then do all the marketing all at once. No, it's stupid. So do this you makes think sense. They're working on a little tiny N64. I hope so. N64 would be pretty cool. Although SNES is as the as sort of the console of my childhood, actually that is my favorite console. But there of all time. are other childhoods that came after yours. Yeah, but I don't care about those. Mm. So my my nostalgia has been totally taken care of at this point. Follow up question: If they did a re-release of a little N64, which means they're manufacturing new controllers, do you think they would still have the joystick that had the string that got loose? You know, the N64 controller joystick got loose over time and it sucked. Or do you think that they would modernize that in that implementation? And if they did, would it change how you played those old games? You know what? I don't hmm. know if Nintendo would admit they ever did it wrong. And if they did it differently, wouldn't it kill the nostalgia? 
Like I okay, so this so. this is really gonna be polarizing. This is almost straw poll. Okay, let's let's head this over is, the straw I think pole. this is gonna be divisive. Like, if you're gonna nostalgia out on N64, do you wanna go to your buddy's house and he gives you the crappier controller that's loose and you're like, ah? Oh. Or do you wanna be on an even playing field like you should have been in all, all the time? Okay, so I'm creating the poll. And then while we wait for people to respond to the poll, why don't we go ahead and uh, hit them with some sponsors! <laughs> Boom! I just spammed that chat Ooh, like nobody's business. You're gonna get banned. Sponsor number one today. Oh wow! It's my I've favorite got one to say. Your favorite, FreshBooks. FreshBooks. So FreshBooks is the super simple to use invoicing tool for small businesses everywhere. It's cloud-based, it runs on your computer or even on your phone with all the functionality available to you, whether you're running iOS or Android. It lets you track your time with their timesheet function, manage your expenses, and even keep track of who owes you money. You can send professional looking invoices in seconds and you can see once your client has seen your invoice for the first time. So so whether you are, you know, running a small time computer repair shop or whether you're developing a mobile app in your spare time and trying to make it and then you end up having to get a job at Linus Media Group because it wasn't, it wasn't uh, going anywhere or... Uh... No comment. No, no, no. Are, are you still working on the mobile app? Not really. Okay. Officially, technically, yeah, but not really. <laughs> um, FreshBooks has got you taken care of. So head over to freshbooks.com slash WAN and enter WAN in the How Did You Hear About Us section when you sign up for your free trial. Bringing us to our second sponsor. So tell me something, James. Bring it on. Tell me something, James. <laughs> on a scale of one to, um, you know, got blackout drunk at prom and woke up next to not just a an undesirable but an entire team of them that didn't exist in high school i would have taken any port in a storm how how uh, how how much regret do you have for eating that enormous piece of i think it was the uh the was it the ghost pepper or the reaper I just thought it was the hottest one. And the answer to either one is no regrets. No regrets Because it's whatsoever. a sponsor, and people are supposed to buy this stuff. Because <laughs> you, were, you were relatively okay at the... Here, you can have some if you want. I, you no, were okay you. at the time. No, you don't want any? Oh, that's right. You're vegetarian, aren't you? Mostly. Mostly. Okay. Mostly. All right, all right. All right, so um, I'm, I, going, I'm I going for the... I eat game. Some, my wife's dad's a hunter. He eats, shoots moose. I eat them. That's good. It doesn't make jerky though. You did the ghost pepper? No, yeah, sure, why not? Is that the ho the hottest one or is that the reaper? Mm, it's the second hottest one. Mm. It's got quite a kick though. The problem though was not eating it. The problem was that enormous piece that you ate at one time because I get a text uh. message from this guy hours later. <laughs> I think it might have been the next morning actually. <laughs> like, just... That savage jerky though. <laughs> yeah. It was actually the way it sat in my stomach. I felt pretty bad until I put a bunch of food in there mm -hmm. after leaving. So savage jerky. It's savage. It's spicy. It's like real deal. Like you were like, yeah, I can handle spicy. Was that spicy? It was spicy. It was the spiciest jerky I've ever had. It's made with the great ingredients without nitrates or preservatives. The goal was to create a snack that was full of flavor. Full of flavor? Sp is spice a flavor? Mm-hmm. You can't taste it when it's that spicy, but... Okay, one of these days... I rest assured the other flavors are tasty. A lot of them are really tasty. The, uh, the maple bacon is really good. Mm. Um, the, uh, oh man, the, uh, what's the green one? Whatever the green one is. I highly recommend the green one. Um, but anyway, they've got... That's uh, broccoli. What? The green one. No, not the, the uh. green jerky. Um, the they've package. got 13 different flavors, though. Go check them out. And uh, also, they make barbecue sauce, hot sauce, and a spice rub. So their Carolina Reaper hot sauce uses one of the hottest peppers in the world. The, uh... The James the, pepper. The, the bell pepper. No, the, the Carolina Reaper pepper. So use offer code LTT and get 10% off over at savagejerky.com. Now let's go back to our straw poll. 
I am really interested to see these results. I'm betting on don't fix it. Fix no. it! Oh, wow! Sweet. Okay. So you're with them, right? Yeah, I, I think if they refresh it, they should just use the same joystick mechanism they use in like a GameCube controller, for example. Interesting. Even though, you know, if you're firing up some perfect dark or whatever, it might be a slightly different experience. I would hope. I have never like side by side A B tested this, but I would hope that a fresh 64 controller, the feel of that joystick is similar to like a normal PlayStation or GameCube or Xbox controller's joystick. So do you think it that's was pretty true? loose from the beginning? No. When you got a new snappy one, it was like, yes. When you got like get one for your birthday or something like that. But how they degraded so poorly over time, it was sometimes unplayable. And if you're player four, you always got that one. And then you had to buy another one and like if they could just avoid that whole thing again, that'd be great. James, tell me something. Tell me about your childhood. Mm. Were you player four? <laughs> <laughs> Do you want, if you don't want to talk about it, buddy, it's okay. But, but were you player four? Sometimes. Sometimes. <laughs> I had two friends who were exceptionally good gamers, and uh, I got slayed every single time at Smash Bros. and GoldenEye. But See, I was good at Perfect Dark. Okay. So that, that's a big load of bull crap. <clears throat> oh, someone mixed them up again. <laughs> Twas I. No, not actually. Mm, that's a really tasty one, actually. Now I don't even know what I'm eating, though. Dang it. They're all good. So, my friend, you know what? I'm going to use his name because he's a dick. <laughs> um, and he deserves it. So my friend Tyson in high school, this guy would have me over to his house. Guy had a PlayStation One, I've had been a to PlayStation Two. Oh yeah, right. That's the camping battle station's house. Mm -hmm. Okay, so guy's got a PlayStation One, got a PlayStation Two. I was living with my mom. We didn't own a game console at all. Computer, yes. Game console, no. Um, don't you have like six brothers and sisters? Yeah. And you shared one PC? Yes. I was the nerd though. Like no one else really wanted to use it that much until right. my until my little sister discovered Habbo Hotel. You guys wouldn't like this. Oh, I loved Habbo Hotel oh, for a time. Terrible. <laughs> anyway, so I um, so so I go over to his house all the time. He's got PlayStations. I got no console at all. This guy, he sits and plays Tekken like uh. all the time. And like, what was that? Um, what was that uh, car game? That a twisted metal, twisted oh, metal, yeah. Tekken. Okay, so he plays these games all the time. I show up. I'm clearly already at a disadvantage because I, I barely play them. I only play when I'm over at his house and like with him. So he clearly has. My, if my experience is X, he clearly has X plus Y. X. Yeah. And he's a big nerd, so I'm pretty sure he was Y is quite large. Um, and he gives me not just a worn out controller. He gives me this like total bitch mode, like third party controller. Uh, like a Mad Cats or something. With an ant, no, not even a Mad Cats. <laughs> no, not even. Dollar store. Like the brand. Broke dick, bush Doesn't league. exist. Okay, not only that, but it has the analog stick broken off. So <laughs> what do you mean broken so off? So one of the analog sticks is a stump. And the entire thing is like the least, like it's like this wide. And my hands like, even now, my hands couldn't well, fit on it. You're talking about PS1, where analog was optional. The default control didn't have sticks. I don't remember. Yeah, it must be PS2 Because Twisted then. Metal... Must be PS2 then. Well, the point is, he makes me use this bitch controller because he doesn't want to invest in another PlayStation controller, which I get. He's a child. He should give me the good one. And he was not a child. He was like 13. Did he have a paper route? Well, like, did no. he have a job? No, but he should give me the good controller. All right, but he can't invest. Investing when your kid is like, my birthday is here. He should still give me the better controller. I'm a, okay. I'm a guest in his house, and I suck at the game. He should play with the crappy controller. That's an adult perspective. As a kid, you're basically a little animal. Well. And it's way of the road. But yeah, get nerfed. Do you think when you played uh, Bond, Goldeneye, when you choose your characters, obviously you have an advantage if you're odd job because he's really small and people have to crouch to hit him or aim down, and aiming down sucked because they only had one joystick. Do you think, other than odd job, that the characters that you chose in Goldeneye were actually balanced, or that Bond had just a, 
Fight Edge. Bond had a, one more health bar. It was so, a little faster. Do you think Bond was different? Only one of my friends had Goldeneye. Um, Get better friends, man. Yeah, I know. One of my friends had Goldeneye, and I didn't go over to his house very much. And as you know, I didn't own any consoles during that time. Straw poll. So, um, well, no, I actually am straw polling a far more important question. Should the guest get the better controller? <laughs> this is far more important. Not if you want to win. If you're the host. No, of course you're going to win anyway. You play the game. Like, I went through this with Luke when um, Mario Kart launched for the Wii U. And we played it together, like, once. Like, pretty early on, I think. And then the guy's, like, playing it constantly. And he goes and he pulls this whole telling himself that he's unlocking all the characters. And everyone should be grateful. But then you can't play with him. Because he's one of those hopeless people that plays, like, party games by themselves. So they can kick everybody's butt at the party. That's not fun. That's not a party. Mm. The best party gaming experience... The best party gaming experience has come when nobody is good at the game. When yeah. everybody's playing some crap game that nobody ever heard of. I once won a Mario Party Mario Party competition at a real party, and it was the Mario Party game where you have to shake the pop. Did you get invited to real this parties one, much? You gotta shake the Wii motes like this? It's it, funny he it called was, it a real party. That's sad. It was a real party because it was hosted by girls. <laughs> it was a real party! It was real! <laughs> this is why it was real. It was in college, one. It was in residence, no parents. It was hosted by women, and because at the end of the tournament, it was me against the girl, and I won. The whole time throughout the tournament, I was using my right hand. I'm left-handed. Took her out. Special weapon. <laughs> so you princess brided her. Boom. If she, if she beat all the wait, guys at that... Do you not get the reference? I've seen the movie. Oh. No, 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 no. This no. is how you feel no, no, when no, no, I no, do no, Wayne's no. World references. No, he you can't have... He does this every Friday. You can't have... Seen the Princess Bride. The Princess Bride is a fundamental cornerstone of our culture. You, okay, you're th three or four years older than me. I don't remember. You, could, when you get old, your memory difference. starts to That's starts the difference. To fade. All right, you know what? Why don't we just do a tech topic? Because I've had enough of your bull crap. Can we do Amazon? They surprised everyone this week. Six new hardware products out of nowhere. Who cares? It's just more like digital assistance. It's because you're in Canada and you can't use them. That's right. why you don't care. Right. We should. So are you. We should have someone in the States who just has this stuff and just. Just reviews Amazon A crap. correspondent. All right, so the original article here is from TechCrunch. Um, uh, so there's, there's more Echo hardware. There's more Echo hardware, Echo hardware, Echo hardware, Echo. Uh, the new Echo is a refresh of the original. It's smaller, it's $100. It's got a cloth covered body. It has a dedicated woofer and tweeter. But this is, okay, aside from the products that they introduced, it's so interesting in, the, in their business model, in the way that Amazon works, which is completely different to how any other hardware manufacturer works. There's not six Google Homes. There will be another one next week. But you know, you know what I mean? They just launched six. There's like one with a screen, one without a screen. There's a big one, a tall one. There's there's so many, and they're all dirt cheap. Why do they do that? How do they do that? Why doesn't anyone else do that? I know why they do that. Go ahead. Let me tell you. It's because Amazon has so many different parts to their business. All these parts are interconnected and actually create a positive feedback loop with each other. So they can sell these hardware products dirt cheap because the point isn't to make all their revenue from selling these hardware products. Their point is to get people using Amazon Echo to order things on Prime to spend more money in their core business, which is selling stuff on Amazon.com. I'm not actually convinced that their core business is selling stuff on Amazon.com. Aren't they still losing money on that? Like with Prime, I only have to order like two things here in Canada to just like wreck Amazon on Prime. But you're an outlier because Amazon's data shows that Prime customers, on average, spend $1,200 a year. $1,200 a year. Yeah, but that doesn't change that that Prime customer could be, like, they could be losing a ton of money on that Prime membership on just $1,200 of orders. Like, you order a couple computer cases, and they're, like, they're done. Like, they're done for what they're charging for Prime. Um, I mean, I think... Honestly, I think their core business is You mean is, just from the shipping cost? Data. You're getting free shipping? AWS is a huge part of the business. I mm -hmm. think it's like a third of it now. And well, they not, have all the market share in that space. And not just AWS, but just yeah. knowing what people are buying. 
understanding the consumer. Because right now, like Amazon is like, it's like the Silicon Valley startup, which they are of course, but like the Silicon Valley startup like on steroids. Well, they're the one that made it through the dot-com bubble. Yeah, where they just, they just never actually exit startup mode. Ah, uh, yeah. They just keep making their business like worth more and more and more, and it doesn't actually matter how much money they make because it's sort of irrelevant. And then once they've just crowded out everybody else, then they just crank all the prices and they're like, yep, has that, ah, has come that at happened me. yet? Come at me, I know what it will. It might. I mean, right now they're still in startup mode. So they go and acquire Whole Foods and then they slash all the prices. But it benefits consumers. For now. For now. Until For the time. world domination. Yeah, until like, when Amazon merges with Costco, then we're all done for it. Mm. That'll be the that'll actually be the end the end of time. Or the end times, whatever it's called, the the dark times. Right. It'll be something bad. <laughs> the reckoning. So there's a new Echo. There's an Echo Plus, which is the same as the original, but now is a smart home hub. It's beefed up. How many people have smart home crap? Well, that's the thing. So what Amazon does is they they put a little fishing line out. And that was the Echo. They see how well it does, and then. If it makes money or there's interest or a market's developing, they just hammer it. And that's what they're doing now with these race to the bottom priced, like deluge of products, there's six of them. They're beating Apple and Google to the punch here. At the, at the Google event, which we're gonna cover next Wednesday morning. I think. Google is planning on, we know they're announcing a small Google Home. Mm -hmm. But there's speculation that they are also gonna release one with a screen on it that can make video calls and watch Netflix, which is a direct response to the Echo Show. So this is a hardware tech space, other than eBooks, I guess, or e-readers, where Amazon actually has a lead over the, the biggest players. So they're trying to grab market share. It's a land grab. Yeah. So pricing-wise, everything from 99 to 130 for the Echo Spot, which is kind of like a crossover between the dot and the show, Smart alarm clock that can make video calls. I mean, basically, yeah. So the idea is they want these things all over your house. Echo button uh, is 20 bucks a pair, hockey puck sized. Pairs that, with the Echo and you have like an input interface. for like yeah. trivia games. Yeah, so you can interact with it. It's 10 bucks. I just, I really do think I'm losing touch. Like I'm getting old fashioned. Check it out the Echo spot though. Or which one of these, there's one that has a speaker on it that's, oh, it's the, t the Fire TV now. I can't believe that being willing to take your phone out of your pocket to look something up is old fashioned now. Don't you want to be able to use it when you're cooking and your hands are wet? My phone's waterproof, get on my level. But you can't swipe. It's called an apron. Apron? I can picture you in or one. Or a tea towel, who cares? Oh, it's so annoying. Because Bixby, as you'll see in our upcoming video, you can control the actual interface, like Bixby, swipe left. How sweet is it to just have your recipe up there, your chopped stuff, Bixby, scroll down, you can see the next part of the recipe, awesome. Hey Siri. Oh, for crying out loud. See, this, this is why, I, this is, this is the problem with all this stuff. None of it works the way you expect. Okay, here's something you like a little. You like. You have an opinion on this, right? The yeah. fi Fire TV. Yeah, Siri 4K. apologized. <laughs> I don't ahead. need. I don't need friends who apologize. They got a new Fire TV 4K. Mm -hmm. It's seventy dollars. That's a hundred dollars less than the Apple TV 4K. Wow, get wrecked, Apple. Hundred dollars less. It's the same cr price as a Chromecast 4K. Okay. All right. I just. I have such a hard time caring about that. Um, speaking of things, I have a hard time caring about. Um, Numlock21 posted this on the forum. The original article is from Guru3D. You don't care about this? Is, this is exactly the kind of thing that gets your blood rushing. Actually, no. What am I supposed to do with <gasps> 20 gigabit USB? Stuff fast. Yeah, like what? Do stuff fast. Don't what, what stuff am I doing? Taking stuff off of external stuff, putting out other stuff. Why would I be doing that? You're a camera person. I have a NAS. You're a camera person. Okay, what am I? Okay, 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 okay. In the future. So. Can we just inter introduce this? This is pretty cool. So basically, it's an update to the USB 3 spec that will allow 
what would be a five gigabit line to carry 10 gigabit per second and what would be 10 to carry up to 20. So it is a doubling of the bandwidth. Um, this will be done by adding two lane operation over existing USB-C cables. So provided the cables have been certified for 10 gigabit per second super speed USB, then this will work. However, both the host and the client need to be compatible with the new standard. So theoretically, 20 gigabit per second, we're talking like 2,500 megabytes per second. So let's say hypothetically that some, you know, camera manufacturer that thinks they're just way too good to charge reasonable prices for their gear were to actually release recording media that is actually faster than just an off the shelf MSATA SSD. Let's say that they were recording to NVMe SSDs. If I had a reader that could read at, you know, to 20 gigabit, then I guess if I also had a 20 gigabit, you know, network, then I could copy over to that. If I had a, a Thunderbolt, what am I doing with this? Why do you care so much about Thunderbolt that you don't care about this? Well, Thunderbolt's cool because it's daisy chainable. It carries DisplayPort. Which, okay, USB USB-C C can display carry DisplayPort as well. But it can, okay, but it can carry DisplayPort and data at the same time. It's a PCI Express connection. Wait, are so you saying that USB-C can't do data and DisplayPort at the same time? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. Um, okay, the other, the other thing about Thunderbolt is that because it is essentially PCI Express over a wire, without like janky adapters, you can actually run basically internal cards. So if you wanted to have a USB graphics card, for example, you need some like craptastic, you know, USB 3D accelerator with the freaking 2D crap on it. It's complicated. They're over a hundred dollars. If you wanted a Thunderbolt graphics card, you could just use a real graphics card. And you don't have to go and spend $600 on a Razer Core or $500 or whatever it is. You can get something like uh, that Beast thing from Banggood. We got one, we never got it working, but that's a whole other issue. The point is that there's the potential for it. Daisy chainable PCI Express, regardless of the actual rated speeds of either of them, is cooler. That's cooler. But let's back this up a bit. Obviously, you can't be mad that this is getting faster. No, it's And great. that it uses the same cord. I like just don't. Some of the I don't have a single thing that benefits from 10 gigabit USB, let alone 20. We we all want the technology to move forward, but here here's a couple of questions. First mm -hmm. question: When are we going to expect these things to any devices like this to actually hit the market? Oh, I don't because we don't even see Gen 2 really yet. Barely. I think uh, barely. Does the Z270 chipset? I think I think Z270 finally got USB 3.1 Gen 2. No, I don't think it has it. I think AMD's chipsets have it. Yeah, 399 does. Yeah, I think that's um, that, that's a next-gen Intel feature. So we're probably like, I don't know. Maybe they'll leapfrog it. Yeah, two, three years away. But we'll see. Second question. I could be wrong. Is a clarification. You said when you introduced this topic that it will double the speed of either your 5 gigabit. Cable. Or your 10 gigabit. Cable. So it means you'll be able to use I thought, the same cable. I thought it was only for, only the 10 gigabit cables could do it. Um... So no, it's basically they're just they're they're doubling up on what could be carried by the existing cables. So right now you can and the I mean the cable certifications are like uh, you know, you can get a 5 gigabit cable and the chances of it doing 10 gigabit are probably pretty good if it was a good cable in the first place. Mm. So I don't stress too much about that stuff. How about this? What else we got? iPhone 8, swollen batteries. Have you, have you seen this? Have you heard about this? I have. Hardwarezone.com. The original poster on the forum was vegetable stew. Like Stuart. Great name. Reports of swollen batteries inside the new iPhone surface online. Like, I know this isn't going to matter or make a dent in anything, either their perception or their sales, but I still just, it's a little win. I like when this happens to Apple. Why? I don't know. Someone bought an expensive thing and it broke. Hey, well, they're going to be fine. They're going to get another one. It's, it is a drag. It might take a couple weeks for them. But I think it's just, you know what it is? Wow. It's not to anti-fanboy. It's just that some people are so hardcore. Like, I try not to fanboy anything. I try to be scientific about things. 
when people fanboy really hard, as many Apple people do, it's just nice to have something to point to. Be like, it, they're not perfect, okay? They're not. The iPhones aren't manna from heaven. They screw right. up sometimes, okay? So this uh, happened in Taiwan and Japan. Um, after three days using the original charger, apparently one of them's uh, body and screen split from the bloat. I made a half centimeter gap. Yeah, that's well, how much it swelled. Wow, it's a lot. There are unconfirmed reports coming in that the iPhone 8 Plus uses the same battery manufacturer, Ampere X Technologies Limited, as the Samsung Galaxy Note 7. Burn, baby, burn. Herpa derp. Now, if that's true, then that looks pretty <laughs> bad on Apple. And Samsung. Well, no, not Samsung, because I don't think, uh, I mean, Samsung has sort of fixed their crap. I don't think I've seen any reports of Note 8s having any issues. Razer confirms development of a gamer-oriented mobile device. The company confirmed earlier this year a $15 million acquisition of all shares of mobile startup Nextbit, who had previously produced the Nextbit Robin smartphone. And they canceled it when they bought them. Mm-hmm. Okay, founded in Singapore, blah, 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 etc. Wow, they really didn't... There's not much to say about okay, it. So I want to speculate, though. Sure, speculate. What does it mean to make a gamer's phone? Other than... Black with green accents. Definitely, that's a given. Probably really boxy and lots of like angles on it. Mm -hmm. But aside from yep. that, um, high refresh rate screen? I'll I would love eye. to see a high refresh rate screen, but given that... that that's Razor a bare minimum. Given that Razer still doesn't have a high refresh rate screen on the latest Blade, I wouldn't get my hopes up. If an iPad Pro exists already... And that I, review is still coming, by the way. If an iPad Pro exists for a year before this gamer phone comes out, mm -hmm. and one of the things gamers care about is high refresh rate screens, if, if that already exists and then this phone comes out and doesn't have that, lights out. I don't think a lot of gamers know that they care about high refresh rate screens. To be perfectly honest, like our audience, mean? I think, is more educated when it comes to that. Mm. Console gamers don't. Oh, oh get yeah. right, console okay. gamers. Yeah, console gamers. Like, I think. Do you know what Razer is, though? I think they think that 60 hertz is pretty good. Well, if you're. If, if, everyone, <laughs> if everyone has the same hardware, it's like having a console. The phone will be basically like a console because everyone's using the same hardware. So they could lock the frame, frame I just rate mean, then, right? I just mean, like, nobody's necessarily demanding this, right? Or are they? Because as per another news item in here, the head of, the, of PlayStation was like, yeah, we're not doing mobile gaming anymore. Yeah, I know. Because smartphones. So they're still selling the Vita within, um, what is it, Japan? Like, I think, is that it? I think it was like Japan and somewhere. Um, but yeah, so <clears throat> Sony is basically like, yeah, nobody wants handhelds anymore. We have not seen that as being a huge market opportunity outside of Japan and Asia. You might say, what about the Switch? But that's like a hybrid. It's kind of like an exception. I think they made market share for themselves. Mm -hmm. Cause, well, yeah, because they made market share for mobile devices because it replaced their TV console. Mm. So Yeah, exactly. Yeah. You had no exactly. choice but to buy a mobile gaming console. So if you have a phone already for gaming, I, I kind of think... That makes sense to have a gaming phone. Yeah, but what is it? Okay, so high refresh rate. What else makes it gaming? Maybe they'll just sacrifice, like, you won't care so much about camera. They'll give you more room to have bigger, beefier components. Else. But the camera doesn't take up almost any room. Like, it's all processing driven these days anyway. And I would make the argument that if you're going to try and sell me a gaming phone, if anything, it should have a better camera. It should have a great front-facing camera so I can, oh, like, like stream mobile games or Maybe something. Maybe it'll only have a front-facing camera. Oh, lordy. Maybe it'll have, like, a joystick. People are like, battery life. Okay. If Razer came out and they were like, yep, it's a flagship class phone. It has, like, a 6,000 milliamp hour battery. I'd be like, okay. Sure. Because now you can actually go and play your Clash of the Clans for, like, five, eight hours uninterrupted on a device. Well, it'll probably be... And I'm kidding. I know it's Clash of Clans. It'll probably sure be... I would, I would expect it to be, like, double thick. Because under this, like, gaming moniker, you can get away with certain things that people don't normally allow in a normal phone. It might be fat and have a huge battery. Yeah, see, there it is. There it is. They're like, Clash of the Clans, lol. Oh, apparently it's dead, too. And I, I don't know. That's the joke. Um, 
grab of cash. <laughs> oh man, I, I always know I can set these guys off with my outdated uh, and like incorrect gaming references. Anyway, what about this uh, this angle here? Okay, what do you got? The creation of an original mobile device also opens up the potential for Razer to invest in mobile esports, a growing space. So is Razer actually like trying to build products that people want to buy and make money? Or are they just trying to like pull a Silicon Valley and make their business worth a lot so that they can get acquired? Mm. Don't they, what are, what are they doing with the, like that currency? I don't remember, but they're like dabbling, they're dabbling in like everything. Like they did an Android console for the living room. Like what happened to that thing? No idea. Maybe they're just trying to have like a fully integrated <laughs> ecosystem. I remember they were really excited about their competitor for like Nvidia Game Stream and Steam in Home Streaming. They showed it to me back at CES like, I don't know, two years ago or something like that. I was like, yeah, this isn't very good. They're like, oh yeah, but it'll be like way better. And then <laughs> I don't think I've heard about it since. Um, Elon Musk wants to use his rockets just to fly around Earth, like go from here to London in 30 minutes. 30 minutes, same price as an economy airline ticket price somehow. No wonder he bailed on the Hyperloop, cause that's like way better. <laughs> Not for the environment. No, but it's faster. Hell yeah, it's faster. It'll shoot you into space like low earth orbit and then you'll just go whoop, at 18,000 miles an hour, I think it is. Like an order of magnitude faster than anything humanity has ever done. And they're building this in the next six to nine months. They're starting it. Well, he's crazy, and it's after six, and uh, TGI Friday, baby! One comment, though. The question on everybody's mind. If you are going to fly to your business trip in Shanghai on this thing, what kind of Gs are you pulling on the launch pad? Are you like... <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? I looked it up. Turns out the human body can withstand nine Gs. Mm -hmm. And that Gravitron game at the... at the Yeah, at like Playland or whatever. Yeah, where it sticks you to the wall and yeah. like your phone goes flying. That's like two and a half to three Gs. And wow. Yeah, so that's only a third of what your body can take, like in fighter jet. But there's that other Gravitron. There's the... Uh, it's not called the Gravitron. It's called like Zendar or something, the one that flips up on the side. Oh, yeah. So on that one, it spins about as fast as the Gravitron, I think. Uh, because it has to keep you stuck to the seat when you're upside down, but then when you're down at the bottom, like it's it's stronger. You're like shot in. You're like slingshot into the bottom. Yeah, yeah. Oh yeah. Regardless. Anyway, it's apparently a typical rocket launch is like three Gs, so similar to the Gav Gravitron. Actually. Oh, that's not too bad. Yeah. Wow. Oh. You could totally do that. Yeah. I could do that every day. Maybe I'll just commute from my house in a rocket. Boom. Boom. We just go to. Sh Straight, boom, indeed. You would Literally go, boom. You would go to every conference. You go to Computex, you go to the Microsoft event to see the new Surface, whatever. Hell yeah, I'd, Half go, an hour. I'd go for the day. So yeah, see you tonight. Especially if it's that cheap. I don't know how he's going to make it that cheap. I don't think he's going to make it that cheap. Yeah, well. All right. Well, thanks for tuning in, you guys. See you next week. Same bad time, same bad channel. Bye-bye. Thanks for stopping by. Do you know that meme? Like the first meme? Oh, I thought you were old. I'm old, but I'm also dumb. Mm. Luke died for this. Luke died for this? How dare you stand where he stood. Oh, during the break when Max was on here, Mape tweeted at me. He was like, I like James. <laughs> <laughs> so there you go, there's your one in 20. Hey, <laughs> I got a couple last time. Exactly. That's your couple I mean, in 40. Like tweets, yeah.